Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome back to Holy Tabernacle of God's Church, nothing denominational. And you know what it is. This is the Gospel, Gospel Church. Church. Amen and amen. We are here to let you know that we are exactly preaching the, the Word of God and the Word of God only. Um, so no gimmicks. Uh, there's no sin in, no uh, money that you can receive for healing or any of those type of gimmicks that, that is out there, what some preachers are doing. But we want you to know, we want you to have the purified, the qualified, the rectified word of God that can save your soul. Mm. We're going to talk today about another preacher now this preacher is no longer with us he's he died committed suicide but nevertheless we're going to talk about all the wrong things that he has done and i'm going to talk to all of you about joining churches you have to be very careful when you join a church now before i get into this whole segment, uh, I'm going to have my dear colleague, Reverend Joe Williams, to lead us in prayer, and we're going to get into this here preacher called Jim, uh, Jim Jones, okay? So, God bless you, man. Reverend Williams, in your hands. Amen. It's a blessing to be back in your presence, and hope that you're praying for us and with us, because what God is getting ready to do in your life, no one else can do it. Amen. So we want to pray and ask you to pray with us today because there's a lot of needs in our country and around the world is in serious trouble, but there's an answer to these problems. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, God, we thank you for being our God. Yes, Lord. Of the living and not the dead and that you understand everything and have all the answers for everything. Yes, Lord. And we come here today because it's not our goodness, but your mercy and your kindness that you spared us to be here one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the moment, for it's a special moment, and you have this moment for a reason, that someone may be touched and delivered and set free, someone that is worried and didn't sleep well last night. want you to know Touch that, you, oh, Lord. God, you're able to make all, everything all right. Yes. They learn to put their trust in you. And, Lord, we pray for our Amen. nation, Amen. families, and those that are, oh, God, needing rent to be paid, need food, clothes, comfort, and peace. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you can do it all. Yes, Lord. No one else. And today, for us being here, is not our goodness, I say again, but it's because you have worked another miracle in our lives. Yes, you have, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us all week long. We pray for the men's women who are running for office in this country, that they may understand that you have a better plan. Yes, touch them right now. Oh, God, let open up blind eyes and let them know they're to serve the people and yes. that they should be treated as you would like to be treated. Thank yes. you, Lord. We ask you to just move forth today in a special way here in, in this room that we're in, that the Holy Spirit will speak. Oh, thank you, and Not Lord. we ourselves. Yes. We honor you because you've been mighty good all week. We know someone has been saved, someone's rent has been paid, someone's got a job. And Lord, we know that you're going to do greater things if they'll just turn to you. Yes. Seek Lord. that way and pray that you, oh God, bring deliverance in their life. We thank you that they will listen today, oh God, to this broadcast. Yes, Lord. That, oh God, they may be touched and realize you have a better plan for their life. We thank you. Those that need to be healed the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, God, we lift them up because we have made peace with Jerusalem. These are your people. Touch them, Lord. And, Lord, touch them in a special way that they may know that you are God and beside thee there is no other. Yes, and thank you, Lord, Lord, that Jesus has come and he's coming again. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. And the peoples of God said, amen. 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 And amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer, Reverend William. Back to our audience, my dear people, it's very important to know about 
your pastor or a church that you're looking for or what you're going to do by bringing your family to one of these places that you can worship God and fellowship with the sisters and brothers in that edifice. Amen. Now, because I am Reverend William, we teach and on all of these different things about false prophecies and all these get rich fix preachers. This is not something that we just pick up and do or show malice or jealousy. It's to alert you and have you to prepare yourself when you go into one of the houses of God. One thing that you don't want to do, and I express this very significantly, you shouldn't join a church so fast. Just wait. And there's a word called discernment. Amen. And you need that today. Every time that you get ready to do something, you have to Detect, judge the matters of things, how you're going to go about and do them. You can meet the wrong people in your life. You can change your whole life around. And this man, Reverend Jim Jones, is one of them. Now, this whole thing started back in 1978, but nevertheless... He was a problem. He was a cult. And if you watch all my videos, you could see that I was teaching about all these cult leaders as well as these get-rich-fast preachers, especially in some of these mega churches and local churches as well. But I want you to know that you need to be educated. You need to know the biblical standings of the geographical settings of God and be able to interpret it properly. And this is where you need a good teacher that can teach you these words and teach you the Bible that you can have a full understanding. Now, to share all these things with you, I've been hurt in the church. Jesus has been hurt. But nevertheless, he kept on doing what he had to do. He kept on teaching the word of God. Amen. And he was betrayed by one of his friends. His name was Judas Iscariot. The Bible doesn't give us full information why he did it. But we can say and will say that he was led by Satan to do this crooked thing. And what he had done was so wrong, he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver, silver was equivalent to $52.80 during that time. That was the price of a slave. That's why you have to get into a Bible teaching church and a Bible teaching preacher that knows how to utilize and dissect and know how to deceive, dive in the word of God. So this is what we're here to do today. Expose these thieves and robbers and these cults that wants to destroy your life. It's not easy what I, Reverend William, is doing. But the Lord gave us the wisdom, gave us the insight, and the Bible does says 
When you open your mouth, I'll speak for you. Amen. And that's the word of God. Now, just before I get into Reverend Jim Jones, I just want to turn the mic over to Reverend Williamson and see what he have to say, because I know he remembered this man, um, the things that he had done. But we got a video to share with you, and that you can see the poor people that they lives were lost because they made the wrong decision. So we don't want you to. This word mistake is uh, is used very loosely. I'm going to say make the wrong decision. Amen. Mm-hmm. Because, see, we have a full mind. We have a mind to accept and reject. And that's the good part about God. When he gave us a mind, he gave us a mind to serve him or not to serve him. So just before I get into the full segment of the said man, and it's it's very sad uh, doing this, but these are adversaries and enemies that we must look out for. And like I say again, you pray to the Lord for discernment. Amen. You, you need it. The Bible asks you to pray for discernment. All the nine gifts, and one of them is discern. If the Holy Spirit didn't give it to you, pray for it. Amen. Because you need that in your daily walk. Yes. The Bible say, how can two walk together unless they agree? So let us agree in the word of God and let us walk together in righteousness and see what the Bible have to say to our hearts. Reverend Williams. Well, thank God, uh, Bishop Parson. This is a sad moment because I remember plainly, I was much younger then, Mm -hmm. but it was a sad fact to see how people not having discernment from the truth, from an error. Yes. And leading, um, supporting this person, uh, individual, who had the opportunity to win souls for Christ in the position but somehow or another, Satan got him twisted and got on a crooked road. Yes. And this is something I, I don't think will ever go away. Um, just no. like the World Trade Center, it will always be remembered. That's right. And I believe we discussed there was about 300 children that um, was um, uh, was totally lies, was cut off, that's cut off short uh, by being parents following them and people uh, from this country moved out and he carried them out into a jungle. And um, it's amazing that they wasn't able to capitalize. Some did. Mm -hmm. And they was able, not a lot, but a few was able to get out and came back and made the report what was going on, that they felt that he was a cult and that they couldn't trust him and that they, they wanted him to go in and find out. Mm-hmm. and search him and see what he was really doing because the people was held captive. Yes, they were. Yeah, and he had people there with guns. So they, they couldn't just go get out and leave and say, well, listen, uh, I'm going to go back home. I'm no longer going to be part of your fellowship. He, he probably just killed them right there, which I believe some of them was shot in that because we watched the film when this congressman went there mm-hmm. and got off the plane with some officials with him and his cabinet, I believe some of them, and went there and to see. And when he saw what was going on, he tried to leave, and Satan took the life through this man because he had a setup. And Satan, I said to you today, Satan has a setup plan for you too. Mm, so true. Yeah, what we're exposing here in the Scriptures is the idea that false prophets— Mm-hmm. That's dealing with false prophets, but the sad part about it, no one had the discernment to see error. I don't know whether they were reading the Bible or just following the man, or just listening to what he had to say. 
and went along with it. We have people like that today. Mm -hmm. They are excited by the appearance and the excellent words they use. How, uh -huh. And so we need to first. So true. Yes, we need to pray for discernment. If you don't have the gift, Paul said pray. That's right. Pray for discernment. And how many do we pray? How much? I mean, we go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. But do we really pray? Do we really pray? Do we Amen. have time to Amen. pray? Amen. And this is what happened to our country, families, the things we see going on. We're not praying. Our children don't see us going to church. They don't see us worshiping God. So everything else, like this man sitting in the pulpit and had these followers, 900 people, I believe mm -hmm. it was, lost their lives in one short moment drinking that. So we have to realize that Satan don't care anything about you. Mm -hmm. He's out to get you. And he's out to get more. And yes, I say he he'll trick you, make you think that you got it all in your hands. But when time comes, you, if you got a, a present, and when you unwrap it, you'll find it's uh, empty. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I hear you. God bless. Amen. Very well said. Well, my dear people, we're going to talk about this here man. Some of you may not have heard of him. Some of you have, and maybe some of you wasn't even born when this hit had happened. But past, present, or future, this is how we learn about things that's going on in this world. Amen. So, let us get started with this here man. Now, this man, Jim Jones, uh, his name is James Warren Jones, May 13, 1931. Uh, November the 18th, 1978, was an American religious cult leader who, alone with his inner circle, uh, enticed and was responsible for a mass suicide, a mass murder of Jonestown, Guyana. Jones was the founding and leader of the People Temple cult, which he began in Indiana during the 1950s. He was officially ordained in 1956 by Independent uh, Assembly of God and in 1964 by the Disciples of Christ. He moved the temple to California in 1965 and gained notoriety with the activities in San Francisco in the early 1970s. And he then relocated to Guyana in 1978. The media report surfaced that the human rights abuse were taking place in the People Temple in Jonestown. United States Representative Leo Ryan led a delegation into the consume to investigate that was going on. Ryan and his others were murdered by gunfire while boarding and returning flight with defectors. Joan subsequently committed a mass murder suicide of 918 of his followers. 304 of them were children, almost all by cyanide poison flavored aid. Yeah. Now, saints, look, this was awful. You think Satan cared about all of them dying? Mm. Do you think Satan cared anything about? Jim Jones, how he was carrying out Satan policies. One thing about Satan, when he's finished with you and you're doing all his dirty work, he'll throw you in the gutter just like you never was. Yes. He don't need you no more. Amen. That's right. Satan had filled this man's mind up. But thieving and robbing, he had these people to sell all that they had and to bring it into the church and to follow him. 
And he told him he was going to take him to paradise. Paradise. That's what and he said. Ga- and Guyana. In Guyana. Now, here's another word that is used very loosely. Talking about a, 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 a utopia. That's an imaginary place mm-hmm. that is not real. There is no such thing as a utopia in this world. Amen. There's nothing perfect in this world. Amen. But I can right. tell you, there is a utopia in the kingdom of Amen. God. Amen to that. Huh? Yes. If you really want a perfect place to go, that is in heaven. Yes. And the paradise that was lost because of Adam and Eve is going to be regained. It's coming back. And you're going to be able to live in it without death, without pain, suffering, crying. You won't be going through that anymore. Amen. And there's only one of those places. And that's in the kingdom of God. Amen. Wow. And I'm looking forward for something like that. And I know you are too. And all of you that are following us, God bless you. Keep on following us and keep on following the word of God. Amen. I reckon we, we're not perfect in anything we do or say. That's right. But the, the, but the one thing I do want you to know, the word of God is perfect. Amen. And what we want to do is read it, coincide it with your life, that you may know that God loves you abundantly. So, therefore, let us get ourselves together and start looking at these type of people. He lied to them. And the people think they was going to a place called paradise. They didn't research. They didn't try to find out what was going on. They just (laughs) believed in a man. And that's why you got to be very careful, especially in these mega churches. All these men, they are rich. They are built up off of the word of God, selling tapes, selling books, selling T-shirts, selling anything that they can gain money. A lot of them are millionaires through the word of God. God didn't ask none of them to be a millionaire. He wanted you to go out there and tell the people about the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell them if they don't come into God's house, it's going to rain down fire. Amen. Amen. Because what's going to happen to you, your soul is going to be lost. Amen. I don't know how many of these people repented for what they've done. I can't put them in heaven. I can't put them in hell. Uh huh. Only God can do that. Amen. But this was totally satanic, demonic, that somebody could do something like this to people. Nobody but the devil. Absolutely. And he needed his foot soldiers like him, Jim Jones, to do his dirty work. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to tell you, Satan cannot reach out and kill you or anything or anybody. He got to get God's permission, just like Job. Amen. If you go in the book of Job, you'll find out there that he was walking up and down to and fro in the earth. Yes. And the Lord asked him, what are you doing here? And he was with God's sons, and these were his angels. Mm -hmm. And he says that I'm here for your Prophet, yeah, and he says, if you take your hands off of him, he will curse you in front of your face. God says, this is my prophet Job. He, he doesn't, 
He doesn't do things like that. In other words, God knew him. He knew him. And he had a lot of trust that he would not do that. Had confidence in him. Amen. Amen. He knew who he was. Absolutely. And you know what God told Satan? He said, okay, you want me to take my hands off him? All right. But he said, this is what I'm going to tell you what you got to do. Whatever you do to him, you better save his life. Yes. Because if you do anything to him out of character that he loses his life, you're finished. My Lord. Now, the prophetic prophecy will be fulfilled <laughs> before Satan that he will come to God, that he will be judged and will be sent to hell and fire and brimstone. Uh -huh. Now, in the book of Revelation, we'll be talking about that a little later. But I did all this here to let you know that it was something that I'm leading to here. Here we find that Satan can't do nothing to anybody unless he get permission from God. The capital G God. Absolutely. Amen. The only God and the God that we know. I want to say this here before we get into the video. We find out that Satan in the book of Revelation, you know what he does? The Bible says he goes to the Lord day and night accusing day and night. the brethren. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Accusing the brethren. That's his job. Satan is on his job, but we as the saints of God, we eat the preachers. We eat that God has asked us to take care of his sheep. Are we really taking care of them? Amen. That's a cool, good question. And That's this is the reason why we're reaching out to you. We want to take care of you. We want you to be enlightened. We want you to know the word of God and where you stand. And the next thing I'm going to say to you, and this I had said previously, your soul are in jeopardy. My Lord. That's what you want to do. You want to get your souls right with God. Uh-huh. Now, there was a man called Charles T. Russell. He was the founder of the Jehovah Witness. If you follow all my segments and talking about these false prophets and and these false teachers and all these things that is going on, you'll find out that I was talking about the Jehovah Witnesses and they are a cult too. Regardless if you have family members, friends, or cousins, grandmother, father, sister, brother, if they're in this place called Jehovah Witnesses. I'm letting you know now. It's a cult. Amen. And it's not of God. God didn't send them. Mm. In the year 1914, Mr. Russell told the Jehovah Witness to go to the bank, draw all your money out, take everything out that you have, and Get rid of it because God is coming. What well, they say, Jehovah. Jehovah is coming to destroy the world. Yes. And we going to be right here for paradise. Mm -hmm. And you know these people went and did that? They sold their house, their cars, they quit their jobs. And guess what? Jehovah never came. My Lord, never and showed up. Never, and lost everything. Because, see, people make wrong decisions. They put man on a pedestal. My Lord. Mm. They worship man more than they wor worship God. You can't do that. He's a human being just like you and I. I need Christ, you need Christ, and everybody that believes in it, they need Christ. 
amen to that. You want to add anything, Reverend Will, you before I play this video? That's complete. That's good enough. Yeah. Amen. They take. <laughs> anybody take that, that's enough. All right. All right. Amen. Well, my dear listeners, I hope this here will help you and touch your heart because what you're about to see a film with people that was alive, had a good life. Mm, had a good life. And living with their families mm. and truly believed in the word of God. But what they didn't have was discernment. Discernment. To see this thief, this robber that, that stole himself in the crevices of the people and fooled them, sheep and wolf clothing. That's and this is exactly what this man was. Amen. All right. All right. We're going to get to this videotape, and I want you to look at it and listen carefully at what happened. And the children and the people during that time in 1978, they were alive and well locked. They was alive and, and well put together, happy until they met to see a nut. In other words, they was innocent. Yes, sir. Mm. Very much so. And these people are no more. But Satan didn't care. Never cared. That's why we have to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10 through 17. Y'all read that. Put on the whole armor of God. Because what we are wrestling against is not made of flesh and blood. Amen. This guy is powerful. But we can defeat him. Oh, yeah. So let us get to the videotape. Once again, it's, it's going to be sad, but I want you to watch the innocent, how they fell for a cult to bring him to damnation. It started as an effort by a charismatic preacher to build a new society, but it ended, of course, with the tragic deaths of more than 900 people. Here's NBC's Joe Fryer. Jonestown was supposed to be a paradise in the South American jungle. It was anything but. The saddest part about this tragedy is that good, decent people died who were well-intentioned. The story begins in America during the 1970s when Jim Jones created a religious movement called People's Temple. The charismatic minister fought for civil rights and had a multiracial family. It was the original Rainbow family. Including his adopted son, Jim Jones Jr. Did his message at the time resonate with you? Yes, yes, yes. No isms, no sexism, racism. But in the new book, The Road to Jonestown, author Jeff Gwynn details how Jones started to change. He's convinced himself that he is some sort of superhuman martyr. Jones persuaded nearly a thousand followers to move to a remote jungle in Guyana. The concept was to build a new world. A socialist utopia. Jonestown was described as this paradise, and it was not. Former member Leslie Wagner Wilson says followers were overworked and underfed. And then as time wore on, I realized that there was no future in Jonestown. Jim became increasingly paranoid. Jones was obsessed with revolutionary suicide. He felt followers should be prepared to die for their cause, even having them drink fruit punch he claimed was poison. Only after most of the people drank the liquid did he tell them, it's not poison, I was just testing you. In November 1978, a concerned congressman, Leo Ryan, flew to Guyana to investigate, accompanied by NBC News. While some followers praised Jonestown, Others want it out. What is your wish today? To go back, go back home and where's home, U.S. As the congressman left, he took 15 defectors with him, angering Jones. 
People play games, friend. They lie, they lie. What can I do about lies? Are you people going to leave us? I just beg you, please leave us. He ordered gunmen to follow the group to the nearby airstrip, <laughs> where they opened fire. Five were killed, including Congressman Ryan, NBC correspondent Don Harris, and cameraman Bob Brown. Sound engineer Steve Sung and field producer Robert Flick escaped, as did Ryan Aide and future Congresswoman Jackie Speer. Back at the commune, Jones gathered his followers for a final sermon. We've had as much of this world as you're going to get. Let's just be done with it. Let's be done with the agony of it. This time, Jones served a punch spiked with cyanide. More than 900 died, 300 of them children. Jones shot himself. We know from autopsies conducted later that a considerable number of people were held and forcibly injected with the poison. In the end, how many relatives did you lose? I lost 11 relatives. Wagner Wilson and her three-year-old Liv because they were part of a small group that escaped during the confusion that morning, hiking through more than 30 miles of dense jungle to safety. How scared were you to try to escape? I was terrified. I was waiting for a bullet to hit at any moment. I was prepared to die on that day. I don't know how I can ever describe it in words. Jim Jones Jr., 18 at the time, lost his wife, but he lived because he was in Georgetown, Guyana's capital, as part of his frequent public relations work for the temple. So the million dollar question is, would I have done it? I can't say I would, but I can't say I wouldn't have. That shows how much power Jones had. And part of that, I believe, is because we all are looking for a place to fit into the world. We're looking for love, we're looking for acceptance, and Jim Jones provided that. Today, a memorial in Oakland serves as a remembrance for those who died, predominantly African Americans and the elderly, whom Jones's initial message resonated with. I think the lessons of Jonestown is to really go within so you don't have to go without. It's better to live for a cause than die for it. Despite what happened, the minister's son still goes by the name Jim Jones Jr. I'm proud of the upbringing and education I was given. That's a lot to be proud of. I also have to accept the horrific tragedy that my father caused, but he caused it, not me. For today, Joe Fryer, NBC News. When looking back, I remember the headlines around that time, and it was just, you almost couldn't even get your arms around the idea of what had happened. What do you think about that, Reverend Williams? Sad. It is. Sad and evil. Sad. And all those lies. Satan took with no conscience. That's right. Amen. And their families, I'm still somehow believe that they are still somewhat suffering from it. You know, carrying that heavy loads of loss that one lady just said on there, she lost 11 um, family oh, members. That's right. 11. And uh, that's, that's a shame. That's really sad. It really is. Really sad. And um, uh, they continue to pray because I hope that they made it into heaven. I hope they had the word in their hearts, but they waited so late to realize that they was with the wrong person. Absolutely. Satan had them caged in. They couldn't get out. And that's what we have to realize today. Everything we see dressed up and we're following, we don't listen, uh, we don't obey. The word of God tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. That is the word of God. Yes. Amen. And, and um, times can get tough, and it's going to get worse, and we need to prepare ourselves. That's why the Apostle Paul said, put on the full armor. That's right. This warfare we're fighting against the secular world, and uh, this world make people think they got it all, you know, and making a lot of money and, you know, going through the media and living Hollywood life and all that. But Satan got his game. And, and each generation, he cha he can change and do the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can continue to make himself look like he's authentic. That is so true. Amen. But he's still the same old wolf on the sheep clothes. That's right. Amen. There you go. And my point is, like Pastor Paul said in 30, 13 chapter, you don't mind if I read it, do you? Oh, please do. All right. Because uh, all this Bible here. You know, um, 
all the scriptures to me is special. Mm. Amen. Yes, it is. <laughs> so what I would like to do, if I can, uh, Apostle Paul was speaking with the Corinthian church mm-hmm. at that time, and um, he was telling them about some warning of sin. Mm-hmm. Sin can take you to hell. <laughs> sin can curse okay. your life. Yes. Sin can make you believe a lie. Come on. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. So the Apostle Paul was warning the Christian church at the time, uh, 13th chapter, if you have your Bibles out there, read it. If you don't have it, you get one or call us. We'll try to we'll get one. Some If they have, don't have we'll get one for them, right? Amen. Amen. We'll do the best we can. Do the best them. we can. Now, we, don't, we don't have the big bank <laughs> accounts and the millions and billions, but we'll, we'll do something to get you a Bible if you don't have one. All right. Amen. <laughs> chapter 13, 2 Corinthians, mm-hmm. beginning at verse 5. Go ahead. Examine mm. yourselves. All right. Now, I'm talking to church peoples, too. Examine yourselves mm-hmm. whether you be in the faith. All right. Because everything out here is not the faith. We just seen those folks was not in the faith. They was following a false leader. Yes. Yes. He, 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 look what he did to them. He didn't take them to no paradise. None whatsoever. He was taking them to a death, to that death. Yes. And Satan's still doing that. No, you're not. Your own self, lo, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Other word, reject. Mm-hmm. And what they did, they rejected Christ because they didn't know him to follow that man. They didn't have that discernment. And they was mm-hmm. led to slaughter. Yes, it was. So we need to make sure, in this day and time, examine ourselves or yourselves, whether you're in church or not, whether you be in the faith. Because after a while, this journey is going to be all over. And every man will be judged according to his works. Mm. Amen. Bishop, preachers, evangelists. Yeah. Amen. So we have no excuse when Jesus comes because he's coming back for his church. All right. Which is what? Not a spot or wrinkle. That's right. Other words, God wants your heart pure. Amen. Mind made up. Come on. Heart been fixed. Come on. So if you haven't made up your mind, make up your mind because Pastor Paul said, examine yourself. Amen. He was telling the current Corinthian church that, that you need to examine yourself. Amen. Amen. And you see, that deals with the discernment. Yes, it does. In order for you to examine yourself, you got to discern. You have to detect and see who you are, what you are, and and make sure you're in the faith. In the faith. Okay? So, without faith, it's hard to please God. Amen. You got to have faith. You got to have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Amen. That's the word of God. Yes. He'll tell you Jesus ain't coming. Absolutely. He'll tell you Jesus can't bless you like I can. And you know what? The Jehovah's Witness, they believe that. They believe Jesus is not coming back. Lord help us. Jehovah is coming back. Yeah, oh my God. You see, this is the wrong doctrine. Mm-hmm. And this... This is where we must look at the word of God and see what the word of God is saying. And that's why you got to be into a true and feel gospel teaching church. Amen. That you can know him. And I always use this scripture, uh, Philippians 3 and 10. Paul says, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? And do you know that he is Jesus Christ crucified and did all the work for us on the cross? Do you know him? Do you know what he has done? Mm. Do you know he is the creator of the world? There's nothing like him. Amen. Well, while you're there, um, Matthew 24 and 4 um, I'm going to share with our audience at that. See, we got to look at the word of God and be aware, be very much aware what the Bible is saying. Because the, 
the Lord always telling you what to look for. And you got to have that discernment to do that. Amen. Matthew 24 and 4, you have it? Amen. All right. Come on, read it to the, our audience, please. Now, this is a warning. Hmm. I just Amen. said, examine yourself, but this is a warning. Now, you can read with us. Write it down if you don't have it. You can read it for yourself. Amen. Listen to what he says. Come on. And Jesus mm-hmm. an- answered and said unto them, that no man, take heed, mm-hmm. that no man deceive you. No man, not mm. your pastor, Mm-mm. not your bishop, mm. not your apostle, mm-hmm. uh, not your pope, mm. not your cardinal, yes. not your priest. My Lord. No man. No man. He done forewarned you before you even got to 2020. So you mean all them titles, that they, they can't uh, take you there? <laughs> Those titles is dead as a donor. My Lord. Don't be deceived. Jesus expressed that. And, and, and just listen what Reverend, Reverend, you're ready to read right now. Go ahead. Finish reading. For many. Um, one. No, oh, you said many. Ten. The word said many. That means a lot of us is not listening. We're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. But he didn't give a number like a million or a billion. My Lord. But he said many. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Read on. Many shall. Come on. Come mm. in my name. Ah, come in my name. That's what Jim Jones did. He came in God's name, mm. claiming glory, and he claimed the fame, yeah. and claiming he knew him, and really he didn't know him, because if he knew him, he wouldn't have treated God's people that way. Amen. Amen. This was a false prophet. My Lord. And he was a foot soldier of Satan. Amen. Read on, Reverend William. In my name, many shall come saying, Come on. I am Christ. They, that's what he came. He come and saying that Christ sent him. And he did all the things that he claimed that Christ told him to do. Now, let me tell you what else he did. Um, And it's not on the film, but through my research. People came there with their wives. Mm -hmm. What he told the wives that God has given him the power that he can have sex with them. My Lord. Mm. Y'all ever take a notice that when you start getting into these cults and get into these so-called, so-called preachers now, it's always wind up with sex. Yes. That you got to dominate a woman's body or her mind. And that in order for you to get the fulfillment or understand Christ, you got to give yourself to me. Amen. Mm Mm-hmm. God never said nothing like that. God never sent no preacher. You won't find nothing in the Bible telling you that you have, you have to sexually give yourself to a man. Yes. Especially a preacher man. Oh my Lord. Especially a pastor. My God. Especially a bishop. Especially those that call themselves apostles. Mm. Call themselves. Listen. This is garbage. Many shall come in my name. Many. And say I am he. That's sad. It is sad. Many. Many. They're liars. They're thieves. Mm. They're robbers. You think they care? They don't care. My Lord. They just want to receive what they want and have the power to uh, overthrow 
and let you know that you want to see God, look at me. Mm -hmm. You want God in your life? Give me all that you have. Yeah. And some people fall into these entrapments. That's right. He said, many shall come in my name. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you. Yes. Yes, Reverend William? Listen, now the rest of, there's some more that go with that when he's saying that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. Amen. And uh, and he says, and you should hear. Mm Mm-hmm. Watch this now. Read your Bible. Write it down. Come on. Here are walls and rumors of walls. Yes. In other words, he's giving you an assignment to be where or what time it is. All right. And then he says, see that you be not troubled. All right. Now, we're having some walls here in the street. That's right. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. Amen. Not just here, but around the world. They're riding and fighting and Destroying things and shooting policemen and disregarding the law and this is this is a war. This is a war raging. We are at at the main war that and that the Lord is indicating that the wars that is going to take place in the Middle East. Yes, you got to keep your eyes on that Middle East. Keep your eyes on that Middle East. Wow. Because this is where all the wars start. That's right. They don't start right here in America. Lord help us. In the European countries, all over there, that these are where these wars get started. And this is where we get ourselves involved into these wars because we want to try to police Everybody in the world, and we need to police ourselves. Oh, yes. Now, I'm talking about our government, our Mm. democracy. Yes. That's Mm. what I'm talking about. What did I find a conclusion? Well, you got, Reverend Weave? And see that you be not troubled. And then he said, for all Mm. these things Mm -hmm. must come to pass. They must come to pass. But the end Come on. is not yet. It's not yet. Now, don't you let nobody go and preach something to you and talk about the world is coming to an end. <laughs> you don't even know the the whole insight, insight and the whole theological concept and the eschatology of all of these here things that is going to take place in the apocalypse. Amen. So, therefore... You cannot be reaching out there and say, well, the world is coming to an end. We in hell right now. You ain't in no hell. <laughs> this ain't hell. Not the one I know. No. Amen. You ain't in no hell yet. But you, and, and I'm going to tell you, you don't want to be in hell. Amen. But one hell that I'm, that I'm going to stipulate, and I want you to listen very carefully. Go back to my videotapes and you'll see all these things that is in there. We all going to die. I want you to remember that we all going to die and we all going to go to hell. Uh Oh, did I get your attention? Amen. (laughs) (laughs) We all going to die and we all going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Now let me clarify that, that you can understand. There are two hells. One is hell fire and brimstone. And one is hell, which is the earth or where you're going to be buried, and this is called a hole or a pit of the abyss. So there's two hells. There are two hells. And so, therefore, the first hell, all of us got to go there. Got to go. Because when you die, that's the first hell you go to. That's the the earth. That's the hole. That's the abyss. Amen. We all got to go there. And you got... These people out here, I had mentioned this in my videos as well. You got people out there talking about you going to hell, hell with you, and all this here kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Use all those emphasis on the word to curse somebody out and don't even know what you're saying. What are you saying? Isn't that something? This is pitiful. Yes. The little that that person tell you that you're, you're going to hell, hell with you, well, he better make himself 
ready because he's going to hell too. I know that right. <laughs> Amen. Because that's right. that's right. If you're a human being and you're breathing, and one day you ain't going to breathe no more. That's it. And when you are put into that casket, and then when you are being eulogized, and when they, t- you, when you take your last ride. When you be in that hearse, mm. and when they take you to the grave site, yeah. and when they put you in the abyss, you are in hell. My Lord. My, my, my. Amen. Y'all keep on following us. I tell you, we got some good teaching for you. Because there's words that the teachers of, of today, not all, but some of them are not teaching properly that people would know the difference in one hell or the other. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost been filled and baptized, you can't help but tell the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen and amen. 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 Now, in my final conclusion, we got three heavens. And guess what? All you know is one. Mm. Three heavens. Yes. Let me give it to you right quick because we're going to have to go. And I want y'all to come on back because we got some more good stuff for you. Oh, hallelujah. The first Amen. heaven is the one that we can see that is visible. It's dealing with the sun. It's dealing with the sky. sky. It's dealing with the moon, moon. the stars. Let's... That's the first heaven. Yes. The second heaven is the space atmosphere. Amen. That's the second heaven. The third heaven is, well, the Holy Father. And the Holy Ghost Mm -hmm. and Almighty Jesus, where they dwell with all their angels. All the angels. That's the third heaven. That's the third one. The heaven of heavens. Amen. Amen and amen. That's the one I'm reading. You that got your commentaries, look in your commentaries and you will find what I'm saying is true. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. You should know the truth. And it shall make you free. Amen. If you know Christ and to the day you die, you will be set free. Amen. Because you're going to have a new utopia. I'm looking forward for that day. I'm looking forward too. Amen. Amen. Well, in our final conclusion, I just want everybody to know God bless you and thank you for everything that you have said and done because we are ready to school you, educate you in the word of God. So, I want you to come on back that we can share more with the word of God with you. So we going, I do want to close out to the Lord's prayer with you. Okay. And so I just want to say this very quickly. I want you to just look into your Bibles and just Go get Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 quickly. Romans 10. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. And then we, I'm just going to share that with you, and we're going to close out. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. Romans 10. Amen. Verse. And 9 and 10. We're going to close out with that. Romans 10, <laughs> verse 9 and 10. Amen. After receiving, receive it, give me a heart amen that you're ready. Oh, I'm going by. Romans 10. Yes. Verse 9 and 10. Amen. Got it? I got it. Romans 10, verse 9 through 10. All right, Reverend William, give it to us. That if you shall confess. Come on. With your mouth. Yes. The Lord Jesus. Mm Mm-hmm. Believe in your heart. Yes. That God has raised him from the dead. Yes. For with the heart. Mm. You shall be saved. Come on. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness. Come on. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. 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 If you believe in that, and if you confess to that, if you confess that Jesus Christ is your person and Savior this day, I let you know that you are saved, and then your work begins. Yes. And I want you to follow up in Galatians 5 and 22 is talking about the fruits of the spirit. You take those fruits of the spirit and then dwell those things that's in your heart. Put the word there and study it. And I guarantee you, God will set you free. Amen. His spirit will be there waiting on you. Yes. Again, God bless you. 
Thank you for joining Holy Tabernacle of God's Church, non-denominational. And you know the magic word. This is the, the Gospel, Gospel Church. Truth.